Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the latest GFS, GM, ECMWF and GFS ensembles. Now do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe as it does really help me out. Now we've had another very fine and dry, beautifully sunny day uh, for uh, pretty much the whole of the UK. A few areas seen a little bit of cloud bubble up but generally it's been very clear uh, and really quite nice um, as we are sitting under this big area of high pressure. Now it's quite warm outside, it's nothing exceptionally hot, maybe 14, 15 degrees. That's really because we've got such strong sunshine and the air mass above us is relatively mild, or around average really for this time of year. However, as we move through, we do remain under this air of high pressure, um, which does mean we're going to maintain these quite sunny, warm days. But overnight, it's still going to get quite cold um, as... Uh, the upper airs are not sufficiently warm enough to keep us uh, above sort of freezing at night, so many areas will probably be dipping down to around uh, zero degrees or minus one um, under this air of high pressure. So big temperature contrast throughout the day and the night, perhaps perhaps a, a range of maybe 15 degrees. Um, and as you can see, as we head towards the weekend, we still have a colder air mass starts to take back over from the northeast um, with lower pressure involved, pulling in easterly winds now it's going to be quite cold underneath that um and when i mean cold this time of year i mean more like 10 11 degrees feeling chilly um and quite cold at night as well under the air of low pressure it's likely to be some showers around now i expect this time of year it's mostly all going to be rain again a little bit of sleet or snow maybe some hail um especially over higher ground but for lower levels it's going to be quite chilly and cold and this is uh, quite a recurring theme in all the models and the ensembles now i'm really hoping it wasn't as i was Hoping we're going to see a warm up soon. But with Northern blocking out the Atlantic, um, this is really what's going to happen. And we maintain sort of an easterly flow. High pressure does try and build over the top of the country, but it's within a cold air mass. So although it means it may dry up in the day uh, and night, it means, uh, and I'll cut out many of the showers, it does mean that there's a decent chance we continue overnight frosts. Now, if I do have a look at the south, if you look towards sort of Spain, um, or southern Spain, parts of Italy, Greece, and North Africa, you can see it's really quite warm and even hot air sitting uh, just towards the Mediterranean the and the south of the Mediterranean. Now, it doesn't uh, with a northern blocking pattern, it means a very subtle change in this pattern that could bring up southeasterly winds. Now, we are bringing easterly winds at this stage, but southeasterly winds would bring up this very warm or hot air. So not all hope is lost for seeing potentially some warmer conditions, perhaps sort of day 10 and beyondwards. And we'll run through what this GFS is showing. But I just wanted to say that because some people will be looking at these charts and thinking, oh, it's just it's going to be really cold and quite miserable. But remember, models can flip very quickly, especially beyond the sort of seven day time frame. So I would say there is a, a small chance that we could be going quite warm um, as northern blocking can um, if positioned right over the top of the UK, bringing a southeasterly wind could bring warmer air up. So it's not all as hope has lost. But on these current current run, it's looking very much more of a northeasterly wind. As we head towards sort of day 10, you can see we do start to pull in a southeasterly flow. Now it's bringing in some warmer air off the continents, especially into the south and the southeast, but it's nothing too warm at this stage. You can see as we head towards sort of... Uh, uh, right towards the end of the run, we do start to pull in a quite warm southerly wind. And now this is what I was talking about with the chances if we do pull up southerly wind and that blocking heads towards sort of Scandinavia uh, and sort of northeastern Europe, it does pull up south or southeasterly winds. And towards 384 hours, we would be going into a heat wave with this. Temperatures would probably be around 25 degrees perhaps, maybe a little bit warmer if it's sustained. Um, as you can see, 5 degree ice firm, if not a 10 degree ice firm gets through, which will be very warm indeed, um, if this does come off. Now, I've looked at the ensembles prior to this video, and it does look like, like that it's quite split. Um, so, it's uncertain at this stage, but again, it is one scenario we could be seeing. If we now have a look at the GM, see how that compares to the GFS, we get a very similar pattern over the next sort of five days with those sort of northeasterly winds seeing quite a cold air mass. We'll turn to the country, maybe a few wintry showers, but overnight frost probably the most uh, influential uh, thing from that. Beyond that, high pressure tries to build back in. Uh, it does look like we're missing one frame there, unfortunately. 
But you can see low pressure out in the Atlantic, high pressure over the, top, uh, over the near continent. And what it does start to do, it starts to bring in sort of a southwesterly flow. Now, if I did run this on in a couple of days, I would suspect we'd start to bring in milder air from the southwest and potentially even warmer air from the south. So it depends how, how, how uh, strong this area of high pressure gets over towards the UK and Scandinavia. And if it does, it starts to put in a southerly wind. So perhaps the GM is going warm in the longer term. If we now have a look at the ECMWF, see how that holds up. See very similar patterns to the other models again, uh, northeasterly winds, another bout of cold air in from the Arctic. Again, nothing substantially cold, but just generally cool. And as we head towards day 10, we do have that low out in the Atlantic, we do try and have high pressure build over the top of the UK. But we've got this little sort of almost cut off low. Um, spiraling it over sort of, sort of towards France, and that could be um, embedded within quite mild air. Could be a very big rainmaker, especially the southeast. Again, it's a small level feature, so I wouldn't expect it to verify at least uh, until we get into sort of the five or seven day time frame. So it's very unlikely to happen like that. But it's showing the potential for a little cut of low developing, which could bring big thunderstorms uh, and showers, um, as it is within some milder and warmer air. But generally, day 10 onwards, it does look like we could be seeing some warmer conditions. Perhaps signs are indicating ind indicative of that, but you know it's just it's going to be very difficult uh, to tell. As we have uh, this our last few weeks been seeing signs of a warm up, and we always perhaps see a day or two of a warm up before those north or northeasterly winds return again, as we're in quite a blocked um, uh, and blocked northerly sort of pattern. Finally, if we have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see the latest uh, 850 HPA and precipitation. You can see generally around average at the moment before we drop off with those northeast sea winds back well below average before we gradually rise up. A lot more precipitation around, so again, more low pressure uh, influence. That's good for the south, who have seen not a lot of rain recently, a lot of cracked ground, um, uh, and hopefully see some rain, you know, uh, to allow many crops, uh, gardens to get some water uh, and able to grow in uh, in the growing season but longer term we return to around average but there is still a big split summer time is going very warm sort of heat wave similar to the gfs eight to ten degrees and even warmer 850 hpa some going much colder back down to maybe minus four minus six uh, which would be very chilly indeed so very split in the longer term but at this at this stage it does look like there is a good chance that we could be seeing something at least a bit warmer um, as we head into early may if we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see generally around uh, in the next few days, 14, 15 degrees, but before it drops down to around 10 or 11, um, come the weekend with those northeasterly winds. In the longer term, you can see it's still a lot of sp uh, quite a big sp uh, split in the ensembles, but you can see there are some members going for well above 20 degrees, 21, 22, 23, and again, GFS doesn't do uh, on its ensembles don't, doesn't do that well with the temperatures, uh, especially in the longer term, um, as it does sometimes underestimate uh, the level uh, the, sl the levels of heat generated by the sun um, uh, and it can always be maybe a couple of degrees warmer than that so we could be looking at 25 degrees plus if the sort of operational run or some of those warmer runs came off so perhaps we could be seeing some very warm conditions towards the start of may but it's very uncertain at this stage so hopefully fingers crossed we will uh, we will finally see some warmer weather coming our way so anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.